The last environmental case against Starlink that I'm aware of was from mm. Biosat, and it was in some ways, I think, premature because uh, it did. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I want to. I didn't say anything. Please oh, go okay. ahead. Um, so they raised NEBAC claims, and I, I don't remember the specifics of them, but I think uh, this may have been one of them. And I think at the time it was determined to not really be covered by the act, or perhaps mm. it was. What, before what act this. is that? I think you use an acronym. Yeah, sorry, I don't know. It's like the National Environmental Protection Act or something like that. And okay. N E P A Act. If you Google, oh it, yeah, that it yeah, then yeah. Um, interesting. And so that someone tried that, but it was early on in in Starlink's mm -hmm. deployment, and I think they were very short on sort of specific facts and. Mm -hmm. Like you have to make a claim of injury, right? And sometimes it can be hard to do that if you're doing it preemptively. And I I don't think sure. they succeeded there. But I wouldn't rule that out in the future as a potential challenge to it. Uh -huh. But, you know, it, it, I'm now very far out of my depth because sure. I really stick to the regulatory piece of things. And when it comes yeah. to appellate law and actually being an attorney in a courtroom, I am uh, sure. not particularly well versed in that. Well, what's funny is I know just who to ask because my journey into the law started with an environmental law firm in 2004 in New York City. That. After working there for a year, I knew I wanted to go to law school at minimum to learn more about this stuff. 